in this town They're gonna fall, they're gonna be They're gonna drop out, they're gonna play And everybody say no This is Laurie Smith on Spreaker. I'm glad to be here. I haven't been here, done a show for a while. I, I have a free account, and uh, so I have I only have about oh, half of it left for my airtime. So I just choose my shows kind of when I feel like coming on and talking about child abuse, and that's mainly what I'm talking about. You know, I my goal, you know, starting out many years ago now, uh, pretty much 2009, um, is just to be one more voice with everybody else's out there, and uh, you know, keep on talking about child abuse and not let it get shoved under the carpet. It's very important that we all do that. We all need to be a voice for these children out here today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and uh, promote awareness and education and and just keep on talking about it because child abuse is happening and it has been happening. Everybody knows it, it goes on and, you know, even if they don't personally deal with it, they see the headlines, they know it's happening and, um, you know, it's not going away. We all need to make sure that this does not get shoved under the carpet. And this is a, we're talking about children's lives here. And we're talking about an issue that no one has the answer to. Because it's all up to individual people and the fact that they're abusing their children or somebody else's children. So, you know, we have to keep talking about it. We have to keep making noise. And, you know, I have a pretty normal life. I'm a survivor myself and I do quite well. <laughs> For some, I'm really thankful that, you know, I'm able to maintain and keep a, you know, a good outlook on life and um, maintain some relationships and friendships and trust enough to, you know, allow myself to be involved with people and knowing that, you know, people can hurt you. You know, I grew up being hurt by by the people that should have loved me and cared about me. And, you know, this is this is an issue. It's not very often that you don't... There are, there are some survivors that are speaking out, but not very often because people just want to forget about it. They just want to move on with their lives and they don't want to think about it, talk about it, or hear about it. But, you know, if we shove this under the carpet, pretty much as it used to be, shoved under the carpet, you know, behind closed blinds, behind closed doors, keep it keep it what goes on in the home is, is, should be private and all this garbage you know it's like uh, more and more children will die you know more and more children will lose their lives because there'll be less protection and less information out there for people to be aware of the signs and symptoms and be aware of what to look for you know get the information you know and and get get the there's lots of websites out there with some great information on what to look for and how to then get help for a child you know there's just tons of info out there look look around search it out you never know when you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have an opportunity to save a child's life you know and to to intervene and it has to be done properly yeah there's there's set protocol really for intervening on behalf of a child and you need to know that information and learn it and get that info because you never know when it's going to be you it's going to be called upon to make the decision do I you know do I report this you know should I report this you might see you might even just think a child's been abused or or just kind of question you know and and how do you deal with it how do you handle it there's great information out there on all kinds of websites just search it out and keep talking about it and keep looking for the answers because these kids lives I mean you know these little babies they without us they don't stand a chance the reason why children are in, ending up in body bags in, in the morgue is because obviously nobody cared enough to intervene or 
knew enough to intervene. And you sit there and you look at all these headlines and you look at the, the news and the reports that come in just on a regular basis of people just in North America alone, let's say Canada, United States, of the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of children that are either in the hospital due to abuse or they're dead because of the abuse or they're just removed from the home or whatever. It's, it's going on, people. And, you know, the people that are abusing children aren't interested in getting help for children, so they're not going to be listening to these shows. <laughs> so it would be a very, very small handful of people that would be interested in listening to, for instance, my show. I mean, I'm just one person doing this sort of thing, right, out of so many. And, like, so many thousands, really. I'm just willing to talk about it. And it's a hard subject to talk about. It's a hard subject to listen to. But the issue is, is for me, it's part of my life it's because I grew up abused and I grew up in this situation and I don't find it hard to necessarily discuss this thing this sort of thing you know and for me I realize that most people find it very uncomfortable and especially if they haven't ever dealt with it or haven't had to deal with it which thankfully there are some people out there that were not abused and they, they don't they don't know thank God um, you know what it, what it is and so they find it uncomfortable and they they don't they think well what does it have to do with me you know I don't know any children are being abused it's like well really are you sure because one in pretty well you know four one in three girls and one in four boys or whatever it is I mean it's just ridiculous the amount of children who are being abused um, in in some way you know we, we, whether it's child sexual abuse child physical verbal emotional psychological abuse uh, neglect you know spiritual abuse we're talking just are you sure you don't know a child that's being abused? Like, I mean, there's so many of us survivors out there, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm just be, happy to be one that's willing to talk about it. And, you know, hopefully, like I said on previous shows here, you know, that that somewhere down the road, somewhere, this information would be helpful. You know, it's like I wrote books and stuff, and all because, you know, I wrote a blog, a public-facing blog, because I wanted uh, my information out there, mostly for my own protection, because I wanted people to know what my parents had done and what my dad had done to me and what to, to my family not just me but to my whole family and it was sort of a self-protection measure to say you know what you're not getting away with this because you get you, you got hauled into court but you didn't have to do any time and my parents were, were, were arrested and brought up on charges child abuse charges but they were not uh, convicted and they did not have to do any time and we did not we were not removed from the home. They were just put through the system with the social workers and whatnot, coming around, checking on us, and you know that sort of thing. But we were not removed from the home, and um, and my parents just kind of got away with what they did and continued on doing what they were doing and allowing uh, just the family to disintegrate without getting any help, even though the courts ordered them to get help. And so this sort of thing happens, it goes on, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it, especially when it's their own abuse. And that's why I came out, and I come out, and I do talk publicly about my abuse, because, I'm pro you know, I'm, I'm probably one out of only so many people who is actually able to do this and maintain a normal life. You know, like I have normal relationships, you know, my, my, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm kind of taxed, you know, like I'm, I'm taxed emotionally, psychologically, physically, in every way. Um, because my husband is terminally ill, he's been terminally ill for 14 years, he's dying, he's, they keep telling me he's dying, I mean, every few years he goes to the hospital, he's nearly dead, but then, you know, we bring him home, and, and then, you know, he nearly dies again, and then I get to bring him home, and every year it's like, well, are we going to get another year, honey, I don't know, you know, and this is a man that, you know, I didn't trust men, first of all, because I was sexually abused by my brother, but also just watching the way that my dad treated my mom, and if you listen to my previous shows here, you'll be able to get a lot of background information on that. But this man that I love dearly, my husband Cecil, is a good a good man. Let's just say that. You know, he's been good to me. And, you know, I'm about to lose, you know, if he does go before me, which he's very sick right now. Um, uh, we, we prepare for him. We've been prepared for his death for a long time because he's terminally ill in stage right and he could go any time when he knows that and I know that and I've had to prepare myself ahead of time as much as possible and this, you know this is a man that that has made my life good 
you know, and it's been, he's really helped to make, kind of make up for all that stuff that happened to me, but how many people will experience that, you know, not very many, but the reason that I do and continue to do what I do is because I don't want, you know, child abuse to be shoved under the carpet, you know, people need to keep talking about this, and the world needs to keep hearing about it, and the world needs to know that this is not going away, it's an issue, and a problem that we've got to find the answer to, you know, and it comes down to really basically funding, and funding comes down, where does funding come from? The public opinion. If the public outcry is is loud enough and large enough, the legislatures, you know, local legislatures, people, you know, the legislation and the people that make those decisions on where the funding is going to go, they they only really move in the direction that the public want them to move in because they want to stay in office and they want to keep their job. <laughs> and so if the public makes enough of noise, you know, for instance, the cancer issue, you know, my husband's had liver cancer, so hey, I'm not saying anything about the cancer, you know, thing. I mean, praise God for the people that are shouting out about cancer. But the what about the children who are being killed and murdered and abused? It's like, you know, everybody's just so just doesn't want to deal with it. I've talked talked and talked about this on Blog Talk Radio. You can catch my shows on Blog Talk Radio if you're interested. I have like I don't know, a thousand over a thousand shows there. Like not all biblical stuff. I do a lot of biblical stuff as well because I'm studying and working through biblical studies and um for a degree, but the thing is is I have probably seven hundred or eight hundred shows dealing with child abuse and child abuse prevention on Blog Talk Radio. That's um, I guess it would be uh, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Lori L-A-U-R-I-E hyphen Smith S-M-I-T-H and those shows I mean uh, I just talked and talked and talked about the issues of why the public doesn't want to deal with this you know like why the world just wants to keep shoving child abuse under the carpet you know and it's because it's ugly <laughs> nobody wants to deal with it well, well, these children. What when we say when when we, when we take on an attitude like that? I mean, I could even put myself outside the box and take myself out of the survivor mode and put myself in just an adult mode and you know not look at my own survivor issues and say, why would we want to treat children that way? Why would we want to to just blow them off because the situation's ugly? You know, like. We can't step back from this, you know. We can't afford to. These children are going to die, you know. There's children out here tonight all around the world, let alone just North America. I mean, you know, I'm always talking about North America because I live in North America, but, you know, I'm not unaware of the world's problems. And, you know, we're talking worldwide. Children, are, are their lives are going to be taken needlessly. We're, we're not talking about accidents and things. We're talking about murder you know, cold-blooded murder. We're talking about abuse. You know, we're talking about life-threatening abuse that's going to that's going to put these children's lives at risk tonight. You think about the thousands, literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of children around the world who are being abused at any given time, whether what no matter what kind of abuse it is. And, you know, this is wrong. It's wrong. I mean, I, I do shows on here, you know, abuse is wrong. Like, you can go back and listen to them. But the thing is, it's, it is wrong. And we all know it's wrong. But walking away and hiding it under the carpet is wrong, too. So, see, the public doesn't want to deal with something that's so ugly and heinous as child abuse. They rather focus their attention on something else that that isn't so ugly and heinous. You know, it's like save the world and, you know, let's go hug a tree. And, you know, I mean, hey, nothing, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying that those things aren't good. What I'm saying is let's not just completely negate and and throw out the issue that, that we need to deal with child abuse as a society and as a world population. This is absolutely pathetic that it doesn't get enough attention, even though every day headlines rolling up all over the news stations, all over the web, and the paper too, even though the paper's kind of archaic now, but the thing is, they're there. 
it's in front of our face. Children are dying. But you know what? People read that and they just skip right on over and continue on with the cornflakes and the bananas. You know, it's like, it's like they look at this and they say, oh, that's too bad. And they go get their yogurt out of the fridge and they have that. And then they go off for their bike ride and then they go to work. Nobody cares. You know, they can't even begin to put themselves in these children's shoes. And that's why I do what I do. That's why, as a survivor, I'm speaking out on behalf of children who have been abused. I'm not just on these shows that I do, these, you know, hundreds of shows, and if not nearly a thousand shows, whining about the fact that I was abused. What I'm trying to do, and what I'm hopefully going to be able to do, you know, in the long haul, even long after I'm gone, the shows will hopefully will still be here, is that, you know, people will get a bird's eye view of just one more story, of one more child and one more family group who was destroyed by abuse you know and I mean I made it I wasn't killed wasn't murdered I made it I didn't kill myself so therefore I figured hey I have nothing better to do with my time you know than to make noise and speak up and talk about this stuff you know and try to encourage people to not close their eyes and not push it under the carpet because this is, people just think, well, this is just, it's just not my problem. You know, they see a movie like, um, just for instance, certain movies, you know, that have come out in the past about children being abused, and they'll cry a little bit, and they'll be like, oh, that's a true story, it's based on a true story, that's so sad, and they'll cry a little bit. But do they get involved in their local community? Chances are no. Some do, but the majority know. They still feel bad. They might even be like, oh, those poor kids, they sure didn't deserve to you know, be treated like that. How horrible. And, you know, they might feel bad for a little while, and then that's it. There's no, how can we let this happen? What can we do? We've got to get funding. We've got to get support. Because there are proven, I, I did some research, man. Let me tell you, I mean, over the years, I've done a lot of research and found that there were and there are governmental programs that work, but they don't have the money to do it in all the areas. So it's only done, these governmental programs are only done in certain areas, and they're only done when where the funding is available, and they have proven to be successful to stop and prevent child abuse, right? And I mean, I had, this is on Blog Talk Radio that I did these shows, and I don't have that article anymore, but it is on that show, and I actually listed the link. And it was amazing to me to see that there are programs out there that do work, and not just picking up the children afterwards, after they've been abused, and, you know, put a Band-Aid on the situation, and thank God, hopefully save their lives, but then, you know, hopefully not end up in a bad situation in foster care, or with some foster parent, or in some institutional type situation, you know, where the children can be re-victimized by somebody else. It's just a horrific situation. It's completely wrong. It's got to stop. And how's it going to stop if we shove it under the carpet and we don't want to look at it because it's ugly? That's why I'm out there doing this because I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it's ugly. You want to try living through it? You want to try surviving it? These poor little kids out here, you know, who will be burned and battered and sexually abused. I mean, and just abused in every way. And then there's neglect and there's, you know, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, which just is really hard to prove in court, <laughs> that kind of stuff, because there's no physical, physical evidence. It's like, you know, this is horrific and it's all incredibly wrong. And there's people in society that just, there are those that don't care. I mean, I've met lots of people that have just flat out told me so. It's not my problem. The children are being abused. It's like, well, no, it is the world's problem. Because the money, the money that's necessary to go in after a child's been abused and to try to get that child some help, the money involved is absolutely, it's just monstrous. It's crazy the amount of dollars spent in the aftermath of abuse instead of preventing it. And so if that money could go to preventing it, we wouldn't have to be picking up the pieces for these poor children. You know, this is incredibly wrong. And, you know, I just, you know, keep talking about it. Keep making noise. Don't let this get shoved back under the carpet because uh, too often that's what the world wants to do. Well, they don't mind watching something on TV because that's not real. You know, that's just actors and it's not real. And sure, it's sad and everything, but it's not real. But when it comes to the headlines, you know, they just look at the headline and go, oh, that's terrible, and then just skip right on over and uh, continue on. And that's generally the way the public handles it. You know, and then they read something else about 
you know, some other thing going on, and then it's like, oh, let's let's put some money into that. Let's go fund for that. It's like, well, what about children who are being abused? You know, let's not forget them, right? And that's what my whole point was. And I thought, you know, I just want to be one more voice out there, just to say, you know, this is incredibly wrong, and I'm going to speak out about it as long as I can, um, you know, to make some noise about this because I just want to be one more voice with everybody else's. It's, uh, you know, it's. It's it's hard to speak out about this stuff because people don't want to hear it, you know, <laughs> and people don't real don't people don't appreciate it, you know. It's kind of like, well, you know, we were enjoying our day until we heard from you, and <laughs> we were having a good time until we had to hear about your poor sob story, and then you know, and this is to be honest with you, this is the truth. People don't want to hear about it, and they don't feel that it's important, and I do because I think about all these children tonight out here, you know, just even in my own city, even in my own area even in my own province, in my own country, who aren't going to get any help tonight. And they will be abused, and there will be no help for them, you know? And Because no one will care enough about that child or about those children to do something about it. And some will be done in secrecy with not too, many, too much of an opportunity for somebody to, to know, but that's why it's really important to, for people who have the ability to, to stop child abuse to... Um, know the signs and symptoms and know how to get help and report it properly and know how to intervene properly right it's really important because we do not want this to get shoved back under the carpet you know like it was pretty well for you know forever really just just recently since the 90s really there's been really nothing really done about it um, except for maybe a little bit in the 80s but not much even mostly just the 90s so I just say to everybody out there keep making noise and you know don't let this get shoved back under the carpet and do whatever you can you know read get information get educated on it find some good some good groups out there get get involved locally um, and join something and get involved you know, especially if you have children to protect your own children and those around you and uh, if you don't have children like I don't have children you know just get involved somehow and get get involved to make a difference you know my books uh, none of my books I don't want the money f from the proceeds from my books it's all going to charity and you can find them on Lulu um, a life of death redemption La Vida Juvies uh, L A V E T A La Vida Juvies and then there's um, one child to be a survivor to another the journey and those books you know I wrote those uh, really oh, I don't want the money for those books you know that those were written to raise awareness and I just feel that the money should go to, to stop child abuse right so that's where the money's going when I make a sales on those books which is not very often so if anybody's interested in getting a copy I'm not getting anything for doing any of this and I don't want anything for doing any of this this is all because I want to be able to hopefully have the abuse that I suffered stand for something good which would be prevention you know, like something good has to come out of this. That's what I, I, I made a decision. You know, back in 2007, that I was gonna, that I was gonna heal. I was gonna do that. I was gonna live. You know, and I was gonna make the choice to get help and to reach out. And at that time, I realized that the only good thing that could come from this abuse that I suffered and watched my family suffer would be to um, be proactive about it and speak out and try to make a difference before it's before I'm gone you know and so I'm hoping that that my work and other people's work will just continue on and carry on and that somebody else will come along and take over and do a much better job with you know who have has more energy and more contacts and more you know ability to get out there and make some noise right so I'm gonna play another song for you and I hope to be back again sometime soon and you guys all take care of yourselves thanks for tuning in and have a great night The people pass me by I often wonder what they're hiding there Behind the smiles girl's eyes Don't lie, why? Why do I feel we're all alone In this universe Squeezing so but from a stone God, I'm so alone We're both alone
时间。